We are dealing with the coming of the Lord. This is the 20th installment in this series of messages. The coming of Christ. <coughs> Tonight I'm going to deal with the binding and the destruction of Satan. I want just before I begin just to cut to the cut to the chase on this and go straight to the end. Jesus cannot lose. Amen. Amen. And Satan <coughs> cannot win. Amen. Amen. Or I say it another way, Satan will lose. Mm -hmm. Jesus will win. That's Amen. just the bottom line. So we're dealing here with uh, you might say a technicality of the kingdom. Two things I want to establish. First of all, that Satan is not invincible. And second, that Satan will be destroyed when Jesus comes. There will be no battle. There will be no battle. Amen. Jesus isn't coming to fight. He's coming to end the whole affair. Amen. He's coming in all of his glory. No one can survive that, not even Satan. Amen. Amen. Well, the coming of Christ does have something to do with the removal of Satan from the scene, totally. And actually, Satan was, uh, has, has already been expelled from heaven. <laughs> you remember that there was a time when Satan was in heaven. There's a, there's a couple of times in Scripture it's mentioned. Three different occasions, two different times. One is in Job, Job the first chapter and the second chapter mentions Satan being in heaven and accusing Job before God, <coughs> telling God that the only reason Job served him was because God is protecting him. That's mm -hmm. why. And Satan told God, if you just <coughs> let me take everything he has and he'll curse you. Thus is Satan, Satan's not omniscient or all wise. He was wrong on this. Mm -hmm. So he did in one day. He took it all. If you've got anything left, if you've got anything right tonight, if you've got anything, it's because God didn't let Satan take it from you. Amen. Don't think Satan has changed. He's still, <laughs> he's still the same. The second time, of course, Satan told God, well, yeah, you, the only reason Job didn't curse, he's still got his health. If you take his health, <laughs> after all, that's what men say. We've got our health. That's the important thing. That's right. Just have your health and your family. Hey, be careful. Don't talk like that. Don't talk like that. Yep. Yep. It's a foolish way to talk. Yes. It's a lot of God's people didn't have their health. You better not be giving God a whole lot of thanks just for that. Well, he took his, he took his health from him. Covered him with boils from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. You see, Satan was in heaven having a caucus about this in the book of uh, Zechariah. Joshua the high priest in the third chapter of Zechariah was before God and the devil was right there at his right hand to resist him in God's presence. So there, there have been examples in scripture of Satan being in God's presence. <coughs> Back when Jesus was here upon earth, he told Simon Peter that Satan had asked God if he could sift Peter. Uh -huh. And sift him, he did. Jesus didn't say, I prayed that you wouldn't be sifted. He said, I pray your faith wouldn't fail you. Yes. But there come a time in a juncture of, of, his, of the history of the world, there come a time when Satan couldn't stay there anymore. Until sin was put away, mm -hmm. there was like a legitimate complaint Satan could register. Mm -hmm. Sin still existed. S Satan knew he fell because of sin. And the, the book of the Revelation tells us about this occasion, the 12th chapter, the 9th verse. It says, The great dragon and Satan was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan who deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out unto the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So when did that occur? Well, the next verse tells you that the response came saying, Now is come salvation. Mm -hmm. When the intercessor went in, yep. Satan had to go out. Amen. That's, Amen. The way, that's the way it is. There isn't anybody in heaven accusing you right now. I don't care what other people say. It really doesn't make any difference to me. They're just wrong. Amen. 
Satan is not accusing you before God anymore. He can't because you've got an intercessor that did take sin away. He really took it away and Satan's the accuser of the brethren down here now. Oh, he's done a masterful job. He's got the people of God fussing among themselves. Well, I'm going to announce to you that Satan is going to be finally destroyed. In the meantime, he can be bound and stopped from doing what he's doing. Let's look first of all at what the scriptures call the destruction of Satan. Satan has, in a sense, already been destroyed. <clears throat> now you've really got to see this, because this is a proclamation. This is not an interpretation. This is a statement God has made. It's found in Hebrews 2.14. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, the children of the people Jesus came to save. The children are partakers of flesh and blood. He also himself partook of, likewise partook of the same. That through death mm -hmm. he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Just in case you don't know who that is. So through his death mm -hmm. he destroyed the devil. Yeah. He did. <clears throat> Satan cannot reign over people who are in Christ. He cannot. Amen. If you can get into the heavenly places, God sets you there when you first come into the kingdom. He sets you in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's Ephesians 2 6. And Satan's not there. He's in the earth. He, I mean, I, he's the prince of the power of the air. I understand that. <laughs> Above the earth, there's a large expanse where Satan rules. I understand that. But that's not where you've been set. You've been set up above that. So Satan has Satan's been destroyed in these heavenly places. You resist the devil, see, by being steadfast in the faith, by getting up here where he doesn't operate. Mm -hmm. One of the banes, the bane is a kind of a reproach, one of the banes of contemporary religion is it's too worldly. Mm -hmm. It's just too close to the world. And this is where Satan functions. If you get in Satan's environment, he's invincible. He's like omnipotent. If you get in his territory, there's no <laughs> chance you can win. He will win every time, not just some of the time. Your only hope is to get out of his domain. Amen. And faith can move you out of there. See, Jesus destroyed him that had the power of death. That is the devil. So he's impotent or powerless when you're in Christ's domain. The scriptures tell us that the people of God are nourished from the face of the serpent. <laughs> this is the good, good phrase in Revelation 12, 14. They're nourished from the face of the serpent. Some of the versions say they're out of reach of the serpent. <coughs> so in Christ Jesus, when, you re when you're being edified by Christ, or being built up by Christ, or fed by the shepherd, you're out of Satan's reach. Well, the scripture says, the wicked one touches him not. That's what it says. So he's been destroyed in this uh, marvelous sense. Now the sanctified life involves occupying a realm into which Satan can't enter. What a marvelous truth this is to, this is to contemplate. <clears throat> Scriptures tell us in 1 John 5, 18, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. You mean, do you know that? It says, we know this. We know this, that whatsoever, whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he is begotten of God, keeps himself, and the wicked one touches him not. That's just, that's just, just a statement of the fact. Mm -hmm. Now, if, so, if this text means he that sinneth not means he doesn't keep on sinning, then I guess Satan touching you means he doesn't keep on touching. I guess it means the same thing. It means that whatever is whatever's in you that come from God does not sin, period, Amen. and end quote. Amen. The divine nature does not sin. <laughs> Whether it's in you or in Jesus, it does not sin. And a part of you that's from God, the new man, the new creation, the part of you that's in Christ does not sin, and Satan can't touch him. Amen. Doesn't have access to them. John says in 1 John 3, 8-10, that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. 
And he did. Bless God, he did. I'm showing here that a decisive blow has already been delivered to Satan. So it shouldn't be difficult for us to contemplate him being taken away. Now Satan, because he's been destroyed, can be successfully resisted. Amen. He can. If you are uh, feel as though maybe you're overcome a lot by Satan, that the world would say, get a life. <laughs> James 2.7 says, if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Amen. Well, you don't think that he's afraid of you, do you? You don't think, do you, that he flees because he's intimidated by you? You were his vassal for a good part of your life. It's where you're at when you, when you get up into faith realms up here. Satan can't stand that realm just like Jesus can't stand his realm. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus, he couldn't stand the devil's realm. That's why he didn't walk in it. And Satan can't stand the heavenly realm. Mm -hmm. He's, Satan's turned off, see, by the things of God. Just <coughs> He is. So if you spend time in them, it like re repels him. Peter said, Whom resists your, your adversary, the devil walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's not seeking up here. He's seeking down here. Seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist? Steadfast in the faith. That's how you do it. Satan can't get through if you're steadfast in the faith. He, he's been destroyed. He's been destroyed. There have been holy men of old who sometimes at their peak level pull some classic blunder like Moses striking the rock. How in the world could he do that? Well, he was living in primitive, spiritually primitive times, brother. Satan hadn't been destroyed back when Moses lived. He would pick around at David and say, hey, look what David did. Would, well, Satan hadn't been destroyed back when David was living. Don't let people under Christ compare themselves with some old saint back there that sinned and say, well, they sinned, and so we expect we will too. Oh, they were occupying a different realm. It's different back then. It's a wonder they were as holy as they were. <coughs> Amen. In fact, there's people they have there are there aren't even within a breathing distance of David and Abraham. Abraham and David are skyrocketed beyond the average church member. Amen. And this is inexcusable. Amen. This is inexcusable for a man today to have less faith and less potency than Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and David, who didn't have the gift of the Holy Spirit, whose sins weren't remitted, who weren't born again. That's a disgrace. Amen. They'd be the first to tell us this. <laughs> they were not made perfect without us, the Scripture says. Which means we got more than they do. Satan has been destroyed. Amen. In fact, when you started out, you, Jesus, just to prove to you that Satan has been destroyed, your salvation is described this way, you were delivered from the power of darkness. How could you be delivered from the power of darkness if Satan hadn't been destroyed? He'd been destroyed. And now he is, he's taking you in, out of darkness into his marvelous light, and Satan can't exist there at all. So these conditions confirm that Satan has in fact been destroyed. Satan cannot stop one soul from entering into the kingdom of Christ. Amen. If there's a soul in all this world that in their heart wants to come to Christ, <coughs> it doesn't make any difference who it is or how low down they've been or how bad they've been. Satan and all of his hosts can't stop that person from Amen. coming to Christ. Why? Satan's been destroyed. Amen. Don't think Satan volunteered to let you go. He didn't. And Satan can't stop the sustenance of the church. Jesus feeding the church and Satan can't stop it. It says of the church depicted as a woman in Revelation 12 chapter, to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle and she, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time, time and half a time from the face of the serpent. Satan couldn't stop this. If you want to be fed by Christ, Satan can't stop it. Satan could hinder Paul from getting to Thessalonica. He told him, he said, I tried time and time again. Satan hindered me. But Satan can't stop you from being fed. 
He may stop you on, see, after earth, down here on earth, he went from here to there. But when it comes to being fed by Christ, see, Satan can't interfere with this. He's impotent to do it. He's been destroyed. Amen. Just get hold of that. Okay. Revelation 12, 15 says, Well, the serpent cast out of his mouth a flood after the woman that he might <laughs> cause her to be carried away of the flood, drown her. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of her mouth. You know, you read uh, today about plagues in the world, in heathen countries, and floods and famines and diseases, and plagues, sometimes millions of people dying. And I'll give you a little interpretation of what that is. That's Satan trying to destroy. If there's just one or two saints in there, he's trying. He's trying to destroy the saints. Satan's not just attacking the world. Right. And these people, these so millions of people that have died, many of them innocent from one point of view, they're helping, they're absorbing the shock of Satan who's limited as to where he can work. Mm -hmm. He can't work, for instance, after you die. Satan can't do anything. He can't get through to you there. After you're absent from the body and present with the Lord, what's the devil going to do? He can't do anything. He's helpless. When you want to come to Christ, he can't do anything about that either. <coughs> He's helpless. The only place he has uh, license to operate is here upon the earth. He's causing a lot of trouble and turmoil and stirring up things, trying to wash the saints away with the flood, trying yeah. to... Get them to drown in troubles, drown in worry, and drown in sorrow, drown in pity parties, <laughs> and all kind of things like that, see? But the, the Lord just has, he just calls on a word, the earth helps the woman and the children just keep on feeding at the master's table. Amen. See, see, he can't stop someone from getting in the kingdom, and he can't stop them from being fed in the kingdom. Why not? Because he's been destroyed. Amen. Now the scripture also speaks of Satan being bound. <clears throat> As to be being restrained. And God, God has no trouble with this. I trust everyone under, understands this. That it's not difficult for Jesus to bind Satan. An angel can even bind Satan. They don't have any trouble with this at all. Now, when Jesus came to earth, he actually demonstrated this. He lived this out. How that Satan is bound. <coughs> and he said, told the people, if I with the finger of God... And cast out demons like Satan's henchmen, he'd just say, Go! They just go, they just go. When the most one did one time as a young boy, that a, a demon would throw him in the fire and throw him in the water, and his father came to Jesus and asked Jesus to help him, and 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 uh, he did. He cast this devil out, and the last, as a last thing, the devil threw this threw this child on the ground and I guess it looked something like a seizure that he had and made one last attempt to destroy that little boy and he couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Finally had to leave. What was Jesus telling you? He was saying, I'm, I'm binding the strong man. When I'm walking around here in the earth, wherever I come, if I find a woman been bent over with the spirit of infirmity for 18 years, I'll just say stand up and she'll stand up and the Satan will leave. If I find a man with a withered hand, I'll just say stretch out your hand, he'll put it out, the devil will leave. If I find a blind man from his mother's birth, I'll just say go wash in the pool of Siloam, he'll see and the devil will leave. If I see an impotent man, I'll just say, pick up your bed and walk. He, what's he showing? He showed, listen, when I, when I speak a word in Satan's domain, everybody obeys. Amen. It doesn't make any difference who it is. Amen. If I say to Satan, go home, mm -hmm. he goes home. If I say, don't touch him, mm -hmm. he won't touch him. If I say his faith won't fail, his faith won't fail. Yeah. Yeah, Satan, he, but Satan can be <coughs> bound. Here's how Jesus put it. He said, I can't enter into a strong man's house and take his goods unless I first bind him. Mm -hmm. So that's what Jesus did. How shall one, it's Matthew 20, 12, 29, how shall one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man? Mm -hmm. Then he'll spoil his house. 
spoiling plunder. So that's what Jesus did. And his earthly, this is in his earthly ministry. When he started his ministry, he tied the devil up first. <laughs> that's really what he did. That's why when he come in the synagogue, he's not come to announce liberty to the captives. How could that be? Bound a strong man. And he was invading the devil's house. Mm -hmm. That was just the beginning. The second coming is going to end this. Now there's another binding of Satan mentioned in Revelation <laughs> the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 6. And I want just briefly to touch upon this. <coughs> I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a chain, great chain in his hand. <clears throat> and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is called the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. And set a seal upon him that he should deceive <clears throat> the nations no more. Till a thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loose for a little season. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such a second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now this passage has been interpreted in a variety of different ways, I understand. And in a sense there's some sharp disagreements on this. But I want to make a few cursory observations about this. <clears throat> this is a necessary prelude. To Satan being destroyed when Jesus comes. Because this Satan being destroyed when Jesus comes, there has to have been something done before that for that destruction to be legitimate. Mm -hmm. It's going to have to have been demonstrated before that. That Satan really was not what he pretended and presented himself to be. For it, it's the same with men. No one's going to be lost when Jesus comes. And it wasn't clearly demonstrated before he came that they were in fact lost. No one's going to be saved when Jesus comes. It wasn't legitimately demonstrated before he came that they were saved. So that's why I'm, I'm talking about this here, that Satan's going to be stated as has been shown to be not be invincible. Amen. Jesus has dealt the, dealt the death blow to him. Now in this particular text you'll notice that it was an angel that bound Satan. It wasn't God and it wasn't Jesus. It was an angel. But the only reason this angel could do this is because Jesus had done something already. Yeah. Jesus had already done something that made this lawful to do. You remember when he was thrown out of heaven in the day of salvation, Michael and his angels fought. Uh -huh. Hey, there's no fighting here. Yeah. Revelation 12th chapter, the angels fought. <coughs> Nobody fought in the 20th chapter. He just took hold of the old dragon, bound him, threw him in the pit, and said, you're deactivated for a millennium, a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Well, something had, must, something, <laughs> something had happened in the spiritual domain for that to be done. You remember one time in Daniel's day, an angel was commissioned by God to go down and give a revelation to Daniel, and he, from the moment Daniel's prayer went up to God, that angel was sent, and he, he fought with some kind of spiritual wickedness for 21 days. Yeah. For three weeks, he was detained in getting from heaven to earth. Mm -hmm. Well, this angel here we're reading about wasn't detained. It didn't take him 21 days to bind Satan. Why not? Jesus had <laughs> destroyed him. See, he'd already dealt the death blow to him. When Jesus bruised the head of the serpent... It doesn't mean he just eliminated him right away. It means he dealt a death blow. Satan's in the progress of dying. He's in the process of dying mm -hmm. from a death blow right now. Amen. He's going down, <laughs> gradually going down. It just doesn't, doesn't look like it. So you notice, first of all, an angel bound Satan. So that indicates to you that something, 
something had happened in the heavenly realms. And bless God, we know what it was. And there was, it was a limited duration. It wasn't bound forever. It's a thousand years. Now, men, I understand there's a lot of quibbling about what is this thousand years? Is it a real thousand years figurative? I don't even want to get into that because that's not the point of this text. Yeah. When people go to arguing about is this really a th so what? If you have finally decided this is a real thousand years or this is a figurative thousand years, what in heaven's name have you accomplished with that? You have wasted our time. That's what you've accomplished. That's not the point of this. Mm -hmm. If he wanted to say this is going to be from 1900 and, and zero up to 2000, if that's what he wanted to say or, or to, to, or to 2900, that's what he'd have said. Mm -hmm. God can speak specifically about years. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said about this time next year. He talked about a famine seven years ahead. Mm -hmm. See, God can be specific. That's not the point here. Mm -hmm. The point is God can specify when Satan stops being dominant and when he can start. He can, he can be specific about it. And he bound for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a permanent condition because he was loosed after that for a little season. Whatever this means, means Satan picked up his activity again mm -hmm. after being subdued for a long season. He must, so we can't be talking about a normal type situation here mm -hmm. at all. Now this is a time, he tells us, when the souls of the martyrs became, became active. This is particular state in the fourth verse of this 20th chapter. He saw the souls of the martyrs had been beheaded for Jesus' sake. People that they gave their testimony and the world killed them mm -hmm. and thought they got rid of them. At last they're gone. Mm -hmm they resurface again. John saw them again. They, the world wasn't done with their witness yet. Amen. It surfaced again. So we're, we're talking here about some kind of revival or renewal uh -huh. where, it looked like, where it looked like a testimony was eliminated, suddenly it surfaces again. Like uh, the days of Josiah, they found the book of the law in the house of God. Well, this, this testimony of these people is going to be revived. Again, that's what that's the thing he's talking about here. As I understand, I understand this to refer to the time when the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. There's a couple of statements in this about this in Scripture. It can't refer to like the general gospel age like it is now. Because there is now in every part of the globe there's places where Christ is known. This is true. But the earth isn't what you'd call filled with the knowledge of the, of the Lord. It's Isaiah eleven nineteen. here the Lord says, They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So he tells you what we're talking about here. As the waters cover the sea. It's going to be dominant, in other words. Here and there in the sea, you might see little islands jutting up in the sea. But, for, but the waters are the dominant thing in the sea. Mm -hmm. He said that's the way the knowledge of God is going to be. The knowledge of God is going to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. It's going to be dominant everywhere. That's what Isaiah said was going to happen. Now Habakkuk, he takes up the same refrain. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Now that's all they said, all they said about it. But we, we, that's enough for we can say, well, this, this is going to happen then. This world's not always going to be mostly unbelievers and with a few believers. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to be that way. Before this is over, mm -hmm. before Jesus Christ is finished in this world as it is now, before he's done, he's going to demonstrate that he's greater than Satan. Amen. It Amen. is going to happen. And it can happen Amen. suddenly. Why on the day of Pentecost, suddenly that whole region was turned around. Just, just in a few, just in an hour, turned completely around. God's able to do this in the, in the world. I'm, binding Satan means that Satan can't interfere with this. Mm -hmm. If Satan could ever be subdued, revival would break out. Amen. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what the text is telling us. Now there are prophecies of this in old time that this would happen. 
number of prophecies that spoke about this. <clears throat> now these prophecies are acknowledged in a sense vague, but there's like there's a there's a sound about them that is refreshing to the heart. Here's Psalm 22, 27 and 28. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. Amen. That's all he said, but that's enough to whet your appetite. Now, you don't want to tell, like, try to explain this away. Just say, ooh, this, look forward to it. Here's another. Psalm the 86th chapter and verse 9. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. Mm -hmm. Will happen. So well, let's not talk about the day of judgment. Well, the, they're going to confess, but they're not exactly going to be worshiping mm -hmm. the day of judgment. Here's another, Psalm 98, 2. The Lord hath made known his salvation, his righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Now this is not, that's not, Jesus is not going to come till that's been fulfilled. Amen. Here again, Zechariah 14, 9. The Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day. There shall be one Lord and his name one. Well, that's not the way it is now. Right. We've got more than one God in the world. Mm -hmm. We've got Buddhists, we've got Muslims, we've got Christians, we've got Chris, Christians, we've got Christian movement, we, we've got Shintoists. We have by no means got this situation. Now, this word's gone out from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's going to be one Lord and His name one. Mm -hmm. That's the knowledge of the Lord. Covering the earth as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah 19, he speaks something about it. Listen to this prophecy. <clears throat> the Lord shall smite Egypt. Mm -hmm. He shall smite and heal it. Mm -hmm. And they shall return even to the Lord. And he shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. Well, I mean, how plain can you get? <laughs> It is good. And in that day there should be a highway out of Egypt mm -hmm. to Assyria. And the Assyrians shall come into Egypt, and Egypt into Assyria, and Egyptians shall serve with Assyrians. Mm -hmm. In that day shall Israel be a third with Egypt and Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, mine inheritance. What well, to this day, these three nations aren't what you'd call united. And they right. never have been. But that's, that's right. this is written. Amen. This is down in the record here. God Amen. went on record. Egypt's going to be healed. Amen. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. And the Egyptians who have fought all through history with the Assyrians uh -huh. are going to be a highway. They're going to go down to Syria and they're all going to serve God together. And Israel's going to join them and they're all going to serve God together. Amen. Now you think there's any chance that isn't going to happen? Is there someone willing to stand up and say, well, in Jesus, this has already been fulfilled? Huh? We'd sure like to see it. If it has been, I'd, I'd like to see the Egyptians and the Israels and the Assyrians all together. Mm -hmm. See, that's a knowledge of the Lord covering the earth as the waters cover the sea. Amen. This can't happen unless Satan's bound. Yeah, that's right. And no man can bind Satan. Mm -hmm. See, we, the church can't bind Satan. Right. <laughs> I hear these men suffering from cranial cavity say, I bind thee, Satan. I think Satan must have a little chuckle out of this kind of nonsense. Our text in Revelation said an angel bound him. It wasn't any man. You don't bind Satan. Let me tell you, Jesus first bound him. So he's like got one hand already tied behind his back. It's kind of that, it's kind of that picture. See, he's handicapped already. So those are some prophecies. Paul links this whole matter. The knowledge of the Lord covering the earth as the waters cover the sea, which is the result of Satan being bound. Paul links this with the conversion of Israel. 
and he reasons about it quite extensively in <coughs> Romans the 9th through the 11th chapters. I'm just I'm going to take just a few thoughts from the 11th chapter. We reasons about this. <coughs> Romans 11, 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? That's Israel. Have, is Israel stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. Mm -hmm. But rather through their salvation is come, salvation is come to the Gentiles. Why? To provoke them, Israel, to jealousy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them be the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? <laughs> If when they didn't believe, all the Gentiles got to believe, what's going to happen when they believe? Can you imagine what's going to happen then? I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them who are of my flesh and might save some of them. So, so Paul's preaching to the Gentiles so he can really reach the Jews. No. I was like, kind of humiliating, but that's, mm -hmm. that's the way it is. Uh -huh. Then he reasons again with us. If the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, if that's what happened, if the door of salvation <clears throat> was thrown open when the Jews said they didn't want it, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Mm -hmm. Amen. It's going to be like a gigantic awakening. Amen. Amen. We talked tonight about Babylon falling. When this world, all it's going to take is for one glimpse of genuine, genuine conversion to be witnessed in this age we're living in and Babylon will fall overnight. Yeah, that's right. Bogus religion, they won't be able to get people to come to their church. Their churches will be empty. If ever it can happen, that on some kind of a large scale, a genuine conversion of a nation takes place and God said he's going to take the veil off of the heart of Israel yeah. mm -hmm. and they will turn to the Lord. That's what his countless prophecies about this in Scripture. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to end up this binding, so to speak, of, of Satan and great worldwide revival. <coughs> Revelation 11, 30, uh, Romans 11, 30. Listen to his reasoning. As ye in times past have not believed God yet have now obtained mercy through their, Jews, unbelief. Mm -hmm. Even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God had concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy on all. Mm -hmm. So it's actually more reasonable for the Jews to be converted than for us Gentiles to be converted. Amen. If you really, wouldn't, really want to get down to solid reasoning, it makes more sense to save the natural olive tree, then to pluck a few branches out of the wild one and stick it in the natural one. It takes more, it makes more sense mm -hmm. to save them, and it is going to happen. Mm -hmm. That Amen. is what our text, I understand, that's what is being depicted in the binding of Satan. It's just, it's, we're going to break out this great, mm -hmm. this great revival. Amen. Now this revival is depicted in the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter. There is mentioned this Number the 144,000, which people read. I guess Jehovah's Witnesses believe these are the first 144,000 Jehovah's Witnesses. They did have to revise their theology because they shot over 144,000. This disrupted their theology, so they say the rest of them will then live on earth. But, well, that must be a comfort to them. But I understand the 144,000 to be just precisely what the scriptures say it was, is speaking of Israel. Turning to the Lord, and here's what it says. I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of God, the living God. He cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the seed of the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them that were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty plain what this is. Mm -hmm. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000, tribe of Reuben sealed 12,000, tribe of Gad sealed 12,000, tribe of Asher sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Nephilim sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Manassas were sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000, the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000, the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000, 
of the tribe of Joseph received 12,000, of the tribe of Benjamin received 12,000. Now that, that's, that's symbolic language, but it's the same as what Paul said in Romans, the 11th chapter, all Israel shall be saved. See, that's what it's saying. The whole, this is going to be like a national conversion. And after this, the next verse said, Lo, I saw a great multitude, which no man could number, out of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. So this is some great, uh, a great revival happened and spread throughout the world. This is, as I understand, the binding of the binding of Satan. Then, a, then after that, Satan will be loosed for a little season, and it, it'll look like it's all over. Symbolically, this picture is him compassing the saints about. It's going to look like Satan's going to ha have the last word, going to win. Then fire comes down out of heaven, just destroys it all, and it's all over. Amen. That's a, that's a, that's kind of a large synopsis of world history. Yes. You can just see it. It's marvelous to see, but God, that nothing like it could happen if Jesus wasn't absolutely King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Nothing like that could happen. Now that's the binding of Satan. Now. All of this legitimatizes Satan's destruction when Jesus comes. See, God's righteous. He shall have demonstrated the nature of Satan and the inferiority of Satan before he just once and for all removes him totally and forever from the scene. We know that Satan, his head is bruised according to that. The first, the first thing God revealed about the coming Savior was he would bruise the serpent's head. That's the first thing he revealed. The serpent would bruise his heel. I gather that the picture is, is the picture of the Savior stepping on the head of Satan and Satan lashing back and biting his heel. That's kind of the picture that you, that you get. But he crushed the head of the, of the serpent. <clears throat> Isaiah foretold this demise of, of Satan. He said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? This is Isaiah 14, 12. Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Remember, he said he would bind him so he couldn't deceive the nations. Here he called it weaken the nations, but it's the same thing. For thou hast said in thy heart, I'll ascend into heaven, I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'll sit also on the mount of the congregation, the sides of the north. I'll ascend above the heights of the cloud. I'll be like the Most High, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, mm -hmm. to the sides of the pit. Amen. That's what's good. Now that's going to happen when Jesus comes again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to put him on the sides of the pit. He's just one of the gang. That's yeah. all. <laughs> He's not going to be on the top. Right. He's not going to be the main person in hell. That's right. He's just going to be one of the suffering ones there. Mm -hmm. But he's going to be. Jesus announced that there's a place prepared for the devil and his angels. Mm -hmm. It's Matthew 25, 41. He shall say unto them on the left hand, that's the goats, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So that's Hell was not made for man. It was made for the devil and his angels. Amen. But the devil shall have brought down some people with him. But they weren't the people who trusted in Christ. Amen. They weren't the people who believed God. They weren't the people who lived by faith. That's not who they were. They were in a realm he couldn't get through to. And he will eventually be bruised under our feet. This is when Jesus comes. Amen. It says Romans 16.20 The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Mm -hmm. So already bruised him under Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's going to do like Joshua did to the five kings. They overcame. He called them all out and, and had the princes of Israel put their feet on their necks. Mm -hmm. And they, then they beheaded them. Yeah. So he's going to demise. He's going to... You're going to have a part in this. See? Yeah. You have a part in this. That's, that's the ultimate humiliation. That's be the ultimate humiliation for Satan. Yeah. That the race he tried to deceive, there's a remnant going to be his demise. <laughs> see, that's the ultimate mm -hmm. humiliation to the, to the devil. And it will all take place when Jesus comes again. Now, here's the, here's the statement of the case. It's a, a 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-10. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. That's the Satan 
Satan has like a, a main spiritual kingpin. Mm -hmm. Daniel called him a, a, a the, Paul called him a man of sin and a son of perdition. Mm -hmm. Daniel depicted him as a fierce, fierce ruler. And it's never, it's, it's a, the whole thing is not really, really perfectly clear. But what it is, it's like Satan's fabrication of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mystery of iniquity is this person being cultured by Satan. And already it was, he was starting to work with this type of person surfacing. It's a mo mo most of us believe that he hasn't fully surfaced yet. Mm -hmm. But he, when he does, he's just going to surface to be destroyed. Yeah. And then shall the wicked, be, wicked one be revealed when the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's what he said. This is, now this is Satan's chief lieutenant, so to speak. Mm -hmm. He's going to destroy with the brightness. Jesus is going to destroy him with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. With all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivables of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they believe not, receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So here when Jesus comes, it's a violent disruption of nature and of Satan's kingdom. Mm -hmm. Neither of them can survive the glory of the Lord. So if you trust in Christ, you should know this without people telling you this. You should know this. You'll be able to reason this out without people telling you. If you can call the name of Jesus now and be delivered from the power of Satan now, how much more, when Jesus is known in all his fullness, will Satan be, Amen. be removed? Amen. Here's how the scriptures put it <coughs> in Revelation 20 and verse 10. The devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire. Just, just thrown in. Fire and brimstone, where the beast with false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. <coughs> When is that going to happen? What's going to happen? The next verse says, I saw a great white throne, him that sat on it, from whose face the heaven and earth fled away, and there's found no place for them. When Jesus comes and all of his glory is made known, Satan is going to be removed from the scene. I will tell you this, Satan's not even going to be at the day of judgment. When Joshua stood before the Lord, Satan was there to resist him. There ain't going to be anybody resisting you. When you stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We know this because right after this Satan thrown into the lake of fire, right after that, we read about the dead, small and great, standing before God, the very next verse. So Satan's removed from the scene when Jesus comes, and then God's going to settle all the accounts. In other words, the first, the first account God's going to settle is the one he's got with Satan. Yeah. That the first one is going to be thoroughly resolved when Jesus comes again. Well, <laughs> Satan's work will come to a crashing, will come crashing down in the wake of divine glory. We have no need to fear Satan now. Satan does have power, and there's no question about this. But it's, it's not power compared to Christ's power. It's power compared to our, right. to our power. So I give you this good news that when Jesus comes again, Satan will be vanquished once and for all. And yes, it is true that he has an emissary that is called Antichrist or the son of perdition or the man of sin. Yes, it is true. And yes, he will work havoc. And yes, he will cause a lot of trouble. There's no question about this. But he is not going to win. He's going to lose because the one in whose power he comes has already been spoiled.